seated. <laughs> beep, beep. <laughs> I know just how Richard feels. Richard has been trying to do that song three times. And I've been trying to do this message twice. So. <laughs> Last week, uh, I don't like doing series of song, uh, sermons because if somebody misses one, it messes the whole thing up for them. But I did this time. I wanted to. I didn't want to. I don't like doing these kind of messages. It's about giving. But that's part of our system. So I had a sermon all made up. I thought it was rather good. I don't, you know, these two ladies up back may disagree, but I thought it was pretty good. And of course, we didn't have church last Sunday. Well, this is actually part two, but you will get the gif of the whole thing. And it's called sacrificial giving. In this temple, the scribes of Jesus' day were teachers of the law, often dependent on people's gifts for their support. Some overstepped the bounds of humility, piety, and dignity by flaunting their position of respect and trust. They sought the glory that belonged to God and even took advantage of widows who helped feed and support them. Now in the temple there were several boxes in the temple where money could be thrown into. Some were for collecting uh, money for the temple tax from the Jewish males. Still others were for free will offerings. These particular boxes were no doubt in the area where the women would gather. They didn't all get together like we do here. In this story, we had the rich throwing in large amounts of money. But they showed off. They told others how much they threw in. They made a big deal of it. They were just plain hypocrites. They did not even love God. They had a special God and that was money. Power. High positions. And creature comforts. Now we have this poor widow that threw in a couple of very small copper coins. The worth of these about two cents or a fraction of a penny. You see, this woman didn't have anything. But she was willing to throw in all she had. She showed that she loves the Lord. And she also believed in the laws of the Bible. It reminds me of when I first started out in ministry. In one of my churches, we had a big hurricane or something that was going on at the time and they were asking for money to be donated like we did for the mass shooters problem. And this lady had forgotten that we had asked the week before that we were going to do it. So when it came to her, I just happened to be where she was. Now this was just after the first of the month, so we know that the welfare checks or whatever the checks are usually is in the beginning of the month. She pulled open a pocketbook, she had five dollars. Knowing this lady, that was all she had for the rest of the month. She didn't have anything tucked away. She pulled that five dollars out. And she said, they need it more than I do. And she gave. It reminds me of this section in the Bible. 
Now let's take a look at the law of the Bible. We say that we should give at least a tenth of our income to the law. Some people say that we give a tenth off the top. Some people say that we should give a tenth off in the bottom, the net income. Some say that they will give whatever they feel as appropriate. I'm not going to tell you what you should be giving. That's not my job. I am going to say to you that you and God will discuss that later. And let us now turn now in our Bibles to Deuteronomy 14.22. The laws of the tithe covered all agricultural products. In giving a tithe, the gift of one-tenth to the Lord. So whatever they took in for all the produce that they took in to live on, they gave a tenth of that. In giving a tenth or a tithe, the Israelites acknowledged that the land was the Lord's and that the benefits of the land were theirs only because of God's blessings. And when they talk of money, they were referring to uncoined silver. Coins, you know, were not made until the Persian <laughs> period. One part that I was especially interested in was verse 29. This church is in complete example of what this verse represents. We don't have any problems in giving to those that are in need. In Genesis 14, 18 through 20, we have Abram giving gifts to Melchizedek. <coughs> who was a true priest of the living God. In giving of this gift, Abram was given to the Lord. This is the first word of a tithe in the whole Bible. Just a side note. We read the word king of Salem. Salem was a shotting word for Jerusalem. Now you may now understand why I said you and God. We'll have to discuss it later. I also believe from reading this that you may also give of your time and your talents to make up your tithe if you do not have that silver. Just like that little lady. And we ask ourselves, what is the proper way to give our offerings? One, one way would be with a humble attitude. We should not call attention to ourselves by saying, I give more than you. You should give more. <coughs> Look at what I did. Two, Another way is to give in large amounts in order that we might realize the joy in giving it. This brings me to a man and a woman that I knew. They gave large amounts at least twice a year. The money they gave was a tenth. They not only gave their money, but they gave in large amounts in time and talents as well. They do not show what they give, and they do not want anyone in the church to know how much they gave. These two people give to other churches, and to many, many well-deserving charities. These two are truly God's service. Now three, 
We are truly asked in the Bible to give off the top of our income rather than from the leftovers. God, has God given you leftovers? And four, we should give consistently, regardless of whether we like the preacher or the hymns or other Christians that's in the church. Let us now look at the flip side of this parable. The widow's need to give these two coins was much greater than the temple's need to have it. No matter how desperate our church's need is to have our financial offering, our need in our wealth, blessed culture is much more to give our money away. The giver is always more blessed than the receiver of the gift. That is just the way it is in being a good steward and a disciple of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. There is a certain daring or venture that ought to be present in our giving. This woman was not cautious when she threw in her last two coins. The offering didn't have to be coaxed out of her, and yet it was a sacrificial offering. So often, so often we will only give grudgingly, <coughs> and if we get something back for it. She gave the money. She gave it willingly, trusting God could do great things with it. God can and does great things with a gift given like that. And let me close with this little story. A small town was trying to raise money to bring the big city sympathy to the high school gymnasium for a concert. One ticket seller went into Joe's barber shop. Joe said he would be out of town and was really sorry he could not be there. But I'll be there in spirit. The ticket seller responded. And would you like your spirit to be in the 12 or the $15 seats? <laughs> it's a matter of stewardship to put our money where our spirit wants to be. <laughs> Let us pray. As we bring our offerings to this church today, O oh God, teach us how to give like your disciples. Let the gift be sacrificial. Help us to present it with joy. And help us know the blessings of being a generous steward in our discipleship. We pray in the name of the one who pointed to the widow in the temple court, Jesus the Christ. Amen. 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 Join us now on hymn number 399. Take my life.